Welcome to this Marimo online training on Marimo finite element geometry and element formulations. When modeling in a finite element model in Marimo, we have to deal with the follow, following ingredients. We have the geometry consisting of nodal coordinates and element topology. We have parts which bring the element properties and the material definition together. Initial conditions boundary conditions and output definitions. In this session we will deal with the geometry and with the parts. The geometry description in Marimo is done with nodal coordinate tables and element topology tables. For this we use the element table. The table element has an attribute called type which for nodal coordinate tables can be coordinate Cartesian or coordinate cylindrical. For element topology tables, the type attribute is used to define the element type, element dot quad four, for instance. You see in the example on the right of the, of the slide, an example for quad four, where you see two elements belonging to part one, and then you see the nodal, uh, the node numbers. Element types, the element types de describe the shape of the discrete units that a structure is divided into. Your, your solid structure is basically divided in small elements and the type sets the element shape. First we have 1D elements, we have the element line 2 and the element line 3 types, 2 node and 3 node elements. For 2D shapes, we have the element triad 3, triad 6 and quad 4 elements, 3 node, 6 node and 4 node elements. And finally for 3D elements we have the element tetra 4 and element hexa 8 types. Those are 4 node and 8 node sol uh, solid elements. With the shape of the element defined by the element types, we need to define further properties for an element. For this we use the element class property. The property definitions contain settings for element strain formulation and cross-sectional properties, integration methods and number of integration points to a cross-section of a 2D element, reduced or full integra integration selection and for reduced integration, the hourglass control parameters, thickness update options, and IMM options for airbag elements. For membrane element types, we have both linear and nonlinear formulations. The nonlinear formulation have in the subclass naming ML at the end. And it should be noted that for 2D elements, the thickness of the element can be defined inside the property, but also inside the element table. When defined in the element table, this will overrule the thickness definition in the, under property. Property types. For 1D elements, we have the following property types. We have property truss 2 and property beam 2 where for beam 2 there are different shape options. The truss 2 elements have tension and compression stiffness only, where the beam elements also have resistance against bending and torsion demand. For 2D elements we have the properties mem and shell, which are uh, distinguished by the fact that membrane elements have no bending stiffness, only in-plane stiffness, and shell elements have also bending stiffness included. There's also the property interface 4, which is only defined for interface elements uh, in order to model failing structures. For 3D elements, finally, we have the property solid. And there's also the user defined elements, property user, which we will not further deal in this section. The element and the properties cannot all be uh, combined uh, randomly. There's uh, 
each element has a limited set of properties that can be used in combination. For instance, if you have a triage tree element, you can only use the mem tree or mem or mem tree ml element uh, properties, or the shell tree or shell element uh, property uh, types. Next, we will go to a few of the, the property types available. First, we have the property trust two. This is a two node 1D element with three degrees of freedom per node. The truss element can only uh, resist axial stiffness, so no bending and no torsion. Displacements in this element are interpolated linearly between, between the nodal displacements. And in this element, of course, you need to define a cross-sectional area. The beam two element is, a, is the tree node 1D element. It has six degrees of freedom per end node. So also the rotations are included. It means uh, the elements uh, with property beam two can also resist bending stiffness. In fact, it can resist axial bending and torsion stiffness. For this element, uh, for this property type, there are various standard cross sections uh, in my model available. For 2D elements, we have first the membrane elements, property.mem. Uh, you can use these with the element type triad3 or quad4. So uh, these are four, three or four nodes 2D elements. The elements have three translational degrees of freedom per node. They can handle in-plane stiffness, no bending stiffness. Uh, you define the element thickness under the property and the displacements inside the element are interpolated linearly from the nodal displacements. The property uh, mem uh, Variants of those are property MEM4 and uh, MEM4 nonlinear. Uh, in this slide, you see the integration points. For uh, four node membrane elements, you can have reduced or full integration. With uh, reduced integration, we have only one integration point at the center of the element, where with full integration, you have four integration points divided over four quarters of the element. It should be noted that reduced integration will allow for three so-called hourglass modes. We will come back to that later. The shell element, the next one, also a 2D element, can be used also with element 3 or 3 or quad 4. The difference between the shell element and the membrane element is mainly in the fact that a shell element can handle uh, bending stiffness and uh, whereas the membrane element can only handle in-plane stiffness. With property shell, um, you have integration points over the thickness of the element. And um, there's, of course, an option to define inelastic bending of a uh, shell element, mean plastic deformation. If you want to model plastic deformation, you need more than two integration points over the element thickness. Uh, in the right of the, uh, of the sheet, it is shown that uh, in the top you see a linear distribution of strain with two uh, integration points. And with inelastic behavior, you see that the stress is nonlinear over the different integration points. So that is the main difference and shows the necessity of more than two integration points for inelastic behavior. Then we go to the property solid. The property solid uh, can be used in combination with tetra 4 or hexa 8 uh, elements. It has either 4 or 8 nodes or 6 nodes, uh, 5 nodes is also possible. Then we talk about uh, degenerated hexahedron elements. Um, each degree of freedom in a solid element has, uh, or each node should uh, I should say, has 3 translational degrees of freedom. So there's no rotational degrees of freedom in the nodes of a volumetric element. The, ele the element can uh, handle volumetric as well as deviatoric stiffnesses. And the interpolation of nodal displacements is uh, linear between the nodes in three directions. A bit more on hourglass, hourglass modes and control. Uh, hourglass modes are also called zero energy deformation mode. 
Now, for some element types, we have hourglass modes available. Uh, that these have hourglass modes available in them. And that is because uh, the, the number of deformation modes, in addition with the number of rigid body modes of an element, is actually smaller than the degrees of freedom, the total number of degrees of freedom of the nodes. Only in that case, we uh, talk about zero energy or hourglass modes of an element. And this is in fact behavior that you don't want to see because that means that your element can deform in a way that there's no resistance, there's no deformation energy uh, needed to have this uh, deformation. And this is uh, an undesired side effect of reduced uh, integration of elements. The hourglass modes can be controlled by applying uh, restraining forces at the nodes. And in Mardimo there's two options for that. You can have a stiffness hourglass control and viscous hourglass control. Stiffness hourglass control is the default for that. On the next slide here you see uh, some examples of the element types. Uh, you see the element types in fact that have hourglass modes in Marimo and you see the hourglass modes displayed. So first you see the reduced integration of the MEM4 element or both linear and nonlinear. You see that uh, these elements have uh, three hourglass modes which are displayed in uh, where black is the undeformed element and the red lines show the deformation mode that has no energy assigned to it without hourglass control. The same is true for the shell 4 element. There we have five hourglass modes which are shown on the bottom right of the slide. And the same applies also for the solid 8 3D element. There, uh, if you have a reduced integration uh, element with one integration point, in the end you have 12 hourglass modes that need to be controlled. With element types defined and properties defined for the elements, uh, the next step is to assign material definitions. Uh, we will talk about material models in the next uh, section. Uh, here we will focus just shortly on the part element, uh, the element called part in Marimo is in fact used to link the properties and the materials for a group of elements. So in the element table the part number is given and in the part definition there's a property given as well as a material given and in this way this is all connected for one group of elements. What we also saw for the element and property combinations, uh, that also applies for material and property combinations. Not all material models in Mardimo can be used for every property and therefore also for every element type. Uh, on this slide you see an example for material.foam. Uh, material.foam is an, uh, a, foam mat uh, a foam material that can only be used for solid elements. That means that you can only use it in combination with property.solid. A property dot solid uh, on its turn can only be used in combination with element hexa 8 or element tetra 4. And uh, the limitations of the combinations of material and property as well as element and property are given on this slide as an example. In the section on FE material models uh, you will be given uh, more information on the different material models that are available in Marimo. Uh, this session is uh, now complete and uh, thank you for your attention.